Hello, I am John Najarian, and I am here at the headquarters for Graze. And you're wondering right now, what is Graze? It's a robotic landscaping monster. I think you're going to enjoy the interview that I'm going to have right now with John Vlay, the uh, CEO of Graze. Thank you, John. I appreciate being here. Yes, I'm here with Graze. I'm the CEO of Graze. And what we're doing is we're building an electric autonomous robotic lawnmower. I'm not the first one to say this, but it's like the Tesla of lawnmowers. So in other words, uh, no gas powered engine in a Tesla at all. And these are 100% electric, battery powered and robotic. And they basically map out the area that you're gonna be cutting or perhaps even doing other things. Absolutely, and yeah, thank you for even comparing us to Tesla. It's a it's great sure. company. <laughs> yeah, it is. I love Elon Musk. We call him Elon, but uh, that's another thing. <laughs> Elon. <laughs> Elon Musk. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. But uh, yeah, so we're, we're making it, you know, I come from the landscape industry, 35 years with a landscape company up in Northern California, both on landscape installation, landscape maintenance, and labor is always such a huge problem even before COVID. Mm -hmm. And now coming out of COVID, it's an even bigger problem. So we're solving that by being autonomous. Also by being electric, we're catching the, the new wave of electric vehicles. And in last October, Governor Gavin Newsom outlawed the, the sale of gas powered mowers, blowers, and edgers. Right. So we're already ahead of the curve by going all electric. So electric plus autonomy saves the labor, save the planet, go electric. Right. We're checking all the boxes. Then when you see it, and I've just seen it demonstrated mm -hmm. outside, it's amazing. I mean, it is literally um, one of those very smart autonomous vehicles. Right. Uh, just like a Tesla or anything else would be. Right. Absolutely. And it's interesting. When I first learned about robotic mowers, I was up at my local mower shop getting my mower tuned up for the spring. And mm -hmm. I saw a sign that said, ask me about robotic mowers. <laughs> so I go, I talk to the store manager, says, what's this about robotic mowers? He says, yeah, they're really big in Germany, but they're just now starting to take hold in the US. And this was in 2018. So I asked him, where can I see one of these? He sent me out to the Google campus in Sunnyvale. And even though I couldn't see it running, I could see where it had mowed, where it hadn't mowed. Some areas it mowed once, twice, three times. Other areas it missed altogether, so it just looked like a bad haircut. Mm -hmm. But right then and there, I thought, man, if somebody could invent a mower that doesn't require the guide wires around the edges of the lawn, which are expensive to install and easily broken, and could go back and forth in parallel lines like you're used to seeing, and be big enough for commercial use, they would have something. Who do you guys have pilots with right now that uh, you mentioned already, golf courses and things like that? Um, military or airports yeah, or yeah. whatever? Yeah, so like I said, we, we started a pilot many, many months ago at uh, Sundale Country Club, club mm -hmm. in Bakersfield, that's a golf course. Also Vandenberg Air Force Base, which is now Vandenberg Space Force Base. I gotta get used to saying that. <laughs> Space but, Force. Space Force. <laughs> but that's a great place because mm -hmm. we've got large parks to mow, we've mm -hmm. got soccer fields, we've got, uh, they've got 999 houses that are, they use a 60 inch mower. So we've gained a lot of uh, data that we can then go back with our engineers to look at the software and, and just continuously improve it. Now, also, just last week, we started with the city of Glendale. Oh, yeah. In, in fact, this morning is where we had a demo with them. So we had the, the mayor out there, many of the city council members, the, uh, the director of parks and recreation. Mm -hmm. There was about 25 people out there and they were all just so excited by they weren't even so much about the autonomous. They just love that it's electric. Right. And, uh, you know, the fact that it's autonomous, that the person in charge of parks, they know that, you know, their budgets have been cut and they have less people. So now mm -hmm. rather than having a person sitting on a mower, you know, eight hours a day, that person can be what we call upskilled to do uh, other tasks that can get them more money per hour. And it's, it's safe. Mm -hmm. Robots don't get hurt. They don't get sick. Right. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. Shows but about, up for work every day. Yeah, every day. <laughs> well, unfortunately, you know, there's about 70 people die every year in the United States from lawnmower accidents. Mm -hmm. Either they're, they're rolling over where the, the rollover protection isn't up or they, they they're roll into a pond. In. They are belted in. They drown. So <laughs> it's a shame, you know, to, to see, you know, the, the number of people that are injured, you know, cutting off their fingers when they're lifting a blade when they shouldn't be. So it's also it's very safe. 
by uh, you know, taking the worker and redeploying them to higher skilled tasks that are less dangerous. Just like, again, Tesla, you guys have a lot of data that you develop from, from basically these from the grays being out in the field. With, with we've got a new deck that it's articulated so it can be raised and lowered you know, on an iPhone or on a tablet. Now the reason that's so important is because as we evolve this in the technology, the mower will be able to identify how tall is the grass it's cutting and auto automatically raise or lower that deck to the appropriate height. Mm -hmm. Also, by running uh, the blades at 3,500 RPM, if you get into a patch of really thick grass, St. Augustine, something like that, rather than just keep going out at the same speed, it's going to slow down so you can maintain a good quality cut on that blade of grass. Right. So well, that's where all that data will come in handy. The, the dew in the morning right. and all that kind of stuff that you know, makes the grass heavier and tougher to cut. I know from having done it for years, <laughs> um, but I just love the noise level of this versus a regular mower, there's, it's night and day. You know, that's the thing too. Corporate centers, there's a lot of them that have large lawn areas and they've got meetings going on and people are trying to work. There's nothing worse than you're, you're on a phone call or a Zoom call and you got a mower, you know, going by your office. Mm -hmm. So this will be non-disruptive. Beautiful, but as we very disrupt disruptive. The market. That's right, as we disrupt the market. The market. John Vallee, thank John, you very much. Thank you I so much. I really it's, like what I'm seeing here with Grace. Thank you. It's great talking to you. Thank you, sir. Folks, if you're as excited as I am about what you've just heard about Gray's Mowing, you can go to graysmowing.com and you'll see an Invest Now button. If you click there, it'll take you to a page describing the Reg A Plus offering that closes April 15th. That's Friday, April 15th. You've got to invest by then if you'd like to participate in the exciting future for these machines.